In this tutorial, we will learn the detailed steps to create a spring action with Blender's rigid body physics for compression as well as for tension. First, we will discuss the case of compression, so let's get started with Blender. We need to create a spring here. The cube will fall on that spring and it will jump or oscillate, so let's move the cube to some height, maybe say 10 units. Now go to the Add menu and from Mesh, add a mesh circle. Then we need to rotate the circle around the x-axis by 90 degrees. Let's also resize it to say 0.1 to make it small, as it will control the thickness of our spring. And we need to move it along the x-axis like this, by a small amount, so we can make it just one unit. Now in the Object menu from Apply, apply its rotation, and then again go to the Apply menu, and apply the location as well, so that the origin of the circle is moved to the world origin. Now let's go to the Modifiers tab, we'll add a modifier from the Generate group, called Screw Modifier. This angle field should be 360, the screw height can be say 4, and we can use 10 iterations for this screw, which is ready for our next action. Now press 1 on the number pad to go to the front view mode. We have to add rigid body physics for the screw and the cube, but with some special arrangements, and so let's first select the cube, then go to the physics tab, and enable the rigid body physics. This should be an active rigid body, and if we play the animation, the cube will simply fall down due to gravity. The speed at which it falls depends on two factors. One is the frame per second value that we have selected in the output properties. And in the scene tab, if we expand the rigid body world, we can see a speed factor. And if we reduce this value to less than one, maybe say 0.5, the animation will run in a slow motion format. Now we know that the height of this spring is fixed, like four, but we needed to change its height based on the oscillation of the cube. So go to the screw modifier, and instead of a fixed value in the height field, right click here, and select Add Driver. Then in the Object field, under the first variable, we'll select our cube, and in the data type, we have to select the Z location. Next, in this expression field, we have to take the minimum of two values. First is 4, which is the base height of the spring, and second will be var minus 1. So we'll get whichever is the minimum between 4 and var minus 1, and this one is basically the half of its height, or the distance between the origin of the cube and the bottom surface. So with this driver set up for the spring, if we now run the animation, we'll see that the cube falls on the spring, and the spring squeezes under its weight, but there is no oscillation happening yet. We have to first enable rigid body physics for the spring, so go to the physics tab and enable rigid body physics. This time it will be a passive type object, and under the collision shape, we have to select the mesh option. Then we'll enable the deforming option as well, since the spring is changing its height or shape. Now select the cube, and then select the spring. Please ensure that the spring is highlighted in the yellow color. Now go to the object menu, and under rigid body, select this connect option. It will basically add an empty object, which is also visible in the outliner. And if we go to the physics tab, we'll see that a rigid body constraint is added. We have to change the constraint type to generic spring, and then under its settings, we can see that collisions are disabled using this option, so we'll deselect it and minimize all the other sections that are not required for this particular case. Now under springs, we don't need any angular movement, but we need this linear part for the oscillations, so we'll enable the z-axis. Now if we run the animation once more, we'll see a spring-like behavior of the cube with some oscillations, but it is using the initial position of the cube as the reference point, which is far above the spring. So we need to use a trick here, so that the spring constraint takes the height of this spring as the reference point. Let's first go to frame number one and select the cube object. Then in the object properties tab, we have to bring down the cube so that it just touches the upper end of the spring. We can use a value of 5.1 here. Then go to the physics tab and let's move to frame number two. We have to keyframe this field called animated. Then for the next frame or frame number three, we will enable this field and keyframe it as well. Let's then go to frame number five. Here we'll insert another keyframe. And finally for frame number six, we have to disable this and then keyframe it as usual. Now in the object properties, we'll switch back to frame number three, and we'll keyframe the initial height of the cube. Then for frame number four, let's change its height to say 10. This is the actual height from where we want the cube to fall on the spring, and we need to also keyframe this. Then we have to go to frame number five and keyframe the same value. We'll ignore the first three frames in our render because they are only added to trick the spring constraint for the initial height. Now if we run this, we'll see a good reaction between the spring and the cube, and it is very realistic, but the cube topples. We can control its behavior using two things. First in the physics properties, the mass of the cube is very important. If we reduce this, we'll get a soft reaction from the spring. Then for the empty, in the rigid body constraint, 
These two fields control the behavior of the spring, like the bounciness and the stiffness. We can change this stiffness to say 12, and let's also change this damping factor to 0.9. This damping factor defines how soon or how fast the cube retreats back to the equilibrium after falls on the spring. Now if we again run this animation, we'll see a more stable reaction from our spring. But we can still make two more improvements in this setup. First, we can see that the spring model is not very smooth, so select it and go to the Modifiers tab. We can change these two fields, maybe to 64, which will give us a very smooth spring, but the spring can occasionally penetrate the cube, which is wrong. This happens because Blender sometimes fails to update the value of this driver from one frame to another frame. This problem usually does not arise in a render output, but if you want a more robust solution, select the cube object. Then from the Object menu, go to Rigid Body, and select Bake to Keyframes. It will convert the rigid body physics into simple animation keys. Now if we run this, we'll get a smooth animation without any penetration issues like before. Then in the second example, for the tensile force, here we have placed the cube just below the spring, and it is at a height of 5. But in the rigid body physics, this time we don't need any keyframe for this animated property. And like before, the spring is set up as a passive rigid body, but this time, the spring is at a height of 10, and its origin point is at the top. If we look at the screw modifier, we'll see a negative value in this field, which is minus 4. It causes the spring to extend downward. And we have also slightly modified the driver expression. The value of 10 that you see here is the height of the spring or its origin point. Now if we move the cube like this, the spring will keep on oscillating following the cube. So select them together, go to the object menu, and under rigid body, select the connect option. Let's then take the empty, and in the physics tab, we'll change the constraint type to generic spring. Then we have to enable the z-axis in the linear section. Now the cube will oscillate like this under the effect of gravity, but we have the same driver issues as we saw before, and the solution is also the same. Select the cube, and in the object menu, rigid body, let's bake the physics into keyframes. Now the cube will move realistically, hanging from the spring. So that's all for today. I hope you liked this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.